Okay, so let's walk through a quick Server 2019 install. Now, I've already created a virtual machine here, and I'm going to be doing it inside this VM. So I've created the virtual machine. I've added the ISO to, uh, to the DVD drive. So let's start up the machine. If we were doing this in physical computer, we put the CD in, we power the thing up. It's going to be the same process. So we start up the virtual machine. and we wait for it to start. There we go, that's promising. All right, and we go through the loading files. Now this is gonna be pretty similar to almost any other Windows install, server, or uh, client. They actually don't change their install process a whole lot. So our first screen here, Windows setup, asks for the language to install, the time and currency, keyboard input. Yep, we're all good with that. So we click Next. Now if we want to take a detour here and go to repair the computer, that's what this option here is for. So if we boot off of the ISO, we can run the repair tool. We're not going to. We're going to go ahead and install. But if you can't boot your system and you have access to the install media, you can run some repairs from that install media. Since we don't have that issue, we're going to click on install now. So this will start our setup process. Okay, license key. If we have a license key, that's great. Um, we're going to skip that at the moment. We're going to run this as an evaluation. Now, some of the older versions of server, if you installed as an evaluation, you couldn't come back and relicense it later. Current versions, you can, so that's not a big deal. So I'm just going to say I don't have the product key right now. And we're going to move forward. Now we have, because we're not using a product key, it gives us the option to do either standard or data center edition. Data center edition costs a little bit more, has some additional features. One of the big features is the number of VMs that are licensed. That's kind of huge. But notice for both of these, we have the regular or the desktop experience. We're going to do desktop experience in this case. This is what's actually going to give us the GUI desktop. The Server 2019 standard without the desktop experience that doesn't give us this. Now in previous versions you might have seen this one identified as core install which would be the uh, one without the GUI interfaces, the desktop. Um, but in server 2019 they've actually changed it so now the default one is the core install and you have to select the desktop experience. So we'll click next and we accept the terms of the license agreement. And we're going to do a custom install. Now this upgrade is only if we have a current version of Windows already installed on the system. And there are limitations as to what can be upgraded to what. Um, you can find all of that in the Microsoft documentation or in your textbook. So we're going to go with a custom install which starts us out from ground zero. So here we have our drive. And what it does is scans through the drives and it looks for available drives that it can install on. And then we'll list them all out here. I only have one. If you don't see the drive that you're anticipating, then that means it probably didn't load the driver correctly. So the way this works is the setup process will load drivers for all common disk controllers and then look for disks that it can recognize on those disk controllers. If you have an uncommon disk controller, you might not it might not be detected and so you might not see the drive. So that's where you'd come down here and load driver and then you can put in the driver disk, load the driver, have it relook for that drive. But that's going to be a fairly rare thing. Now if you click next here at this point it's going to take all of this, whichever drive you selected, all of the unallocated space, create a single volume on that unallocated space and install Windows on that. And most of the time that's what we want. You do have the option here to delete, format, or extend partitions, none of which are active because we don't have any partitions that can be deleted, formatted, or extended. We also can create our own partitions here, or volumes, and we can custom do our volumes if we want to. And some people do that and some people don't. I tend to not. So I'm just going to click Next. So it's going to take all of that drive space, create me a single volume using all of it, and then we will install there. All right, so we're going to run through this process of copying files, getting ready for installation, installing features, installing updates, finishing up. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and then we're going to pick it up again once we get through this process. 
Okay, we finished off with the previous screen, and when it gets to the end of that screen, it's going to do a reboot. When it does, it comes up with this. Press any key to boot from the CD. If you just ignore that, it'll bypass the CD boot, and that's important because our CD is still in there. But it will bypass that CD boot and go back into continuing our setup process. If you hit a key at that point, then what's going to happen is it's going to go back and it's going to start this whole process over again. And we really want to avoid that every chance we get. So um, we don't hit a key. We just let things. If you see that, and this will happen sometimes, somebody will put their hand down, and accidentally bump a key or something, and it will start that process. You just can either run through the process again, it actually doesn't take that long, depending on the speed of your hard drives, it doesn't take that long, or you just um, bypass the process, reboot, and come back to normal if you catch it soon enough. All right, rebooting again. And after each one of these boots, what's happening is it's running an install pass and it's making a few more adjustments to the operating system and then rebooting so those adjustments take effect. All right, now we come into a customization setting. So the default account is going to be administrator. We're going to set our password. And then let me go ahead and blow this up to full screen or to closer to full screen anyway okay there we go now at this point our server is completely up and see if I can type the password correctly there we go our server is up and operational now it's not actually going to do anything at this point though because uh, we've installed the operating system but we haven't installed any roles or features or anything like that so the operating system is up and functional but we're not going to do anything with it until um, we start installing roles installing features and giving it a job inside of our network so this is just the initial configuration all right um, after the initial boot up, we're going to do most of our configuration in Server Manager. And Server Manager is something we're going to look at in a subsequent video. Uh, there it goes. It's finally starting to come up. It takes it a little while after initial boot or after initial start. So here is Server Manager. We're going to take a look at this uh, in a, another video next week. But for the moment, just know this is where we're going to do most of our configuration and where we're going to do a lot of our server management. All right, so that's it. Fairly straightforward process of setting up or installing, not necessarily setting up, but installing uh, Microsoft Windows Server 2019.